Hootie motherfucking who, you guys. It's Caleb Salvatore. I almost said I'm here for Bread and Circuses. That's my podcast. That's a, shame, a shameless self-promotion. That's not what I'm here for, though. I'm here for Drunk and Disorderly Media. I'm here to read you guys the motherfucking news. Kind of like what you're used to seeing on, you know, CNN and that other bullshit. But at least when I lie to you, it'll be on accident, okay? I, I promise. Um, they may or may not be holding a gun to my head because they just kind of needed a sexy motherfucker to come on here and read the news. But nonetheless, I'm here for 15 minutes, so let's make this shit work, okay? Uh, first story, Vermont bill would ban cell phone use for anyone over the age of 21. Okay, first, let's put out the disclaimer. This is kind of like a protest bill, like when you see those women, like Democratic feminists bitches senators uh, sorry <laughs> uh try to ban like masturbation as an abortion protest basically what it is and it's surprisingly enough it's a democrat um it's kind of to like make fun of the gun laws uh, and the cigarette laws and the alcohol laws, all the shit going on right now. Here's what it says. In light of the dangerous and life-threatening consequences of cell phone use by young people, it's clear that persons under the age of 21 years are not developmentally mature enough to safely possess them, the bill reads. Well, I guess that depends, you know, if you're... <laughs> no, actually, I won't go down that road, huh? No personal shit. Just as the General Assembly has concluded that persons under 21 years of age are not mature enough to possess firearms, smoke cigarettes, or consume alcohol. Okay. I, I kind of like how he's standing on that. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's funny, but like, I feel like the wrong people are going to take this bill and run with it and like make it a reality. That's always the concern is like some fucking boomer out there is going to hear that and be like, well, that's a good idea. That's a good, like, cause all it takes is like one fucking bullshit story to scare all the boomers in the world you see all this shit about vaping even though they won't tell you that it's like illegal vapes that are going around you know the the black market thc vapes coated in vitamin e that go through your lungs like a shotgun blast nothing to do with the other vapes and it's part of the black market honestly wouldn't be surprised if the government was poisoning them themselves whoa i'm going off track here but yeah so it's super easy to convince boomers about just about anything as long as you can get a mainstream media source to publish it boomers will believe it um so what else it says i have no delusions that it's going to pass he told reporter eric whatever i probably wouldn't vote for it myself like uh, like i said though there's a lot of boomers out there that are going to hear that bill and go oh that's a good idea that's a good idea here's my thing though because the boomers freak out about us like texting and driving and all that shit but have you ever noticed that whenever you see someone dangerously texting and driving, it's a fucking boomer? Texting and driving is an art, okay? I'm not, I'm not ever going to suggest that you should text and drive, neither will any of my affiliates. But if you're going to text and drive, the best way to do it is this. Look up, get a couple letters in, and like you, most of us have the keys memorized so we know where it's going, right? Boomers can't fucking do that. Boomers have to like look down and type with both hands and steer with their fucking knees. If you see someone driving like a maniac or like they're wasted while they're texting and driving, it is 95% of the time a boomer. Every, it's like almost every fucking time. So, all right, let's, let's go on to the next story here. I've, I've, I've gone on my ageist rants enough. Um, what's the next one? Iran shot down the Ukrainian jet, or not jet, uh, commercial airliner on accident. Uh, whether or not you believe it's an accident, I, I, guys, I don't believe anything that I hear from the news in the fucking, in the fucking media about the Middle East. I, I don't believe anything. Okay, it's all horseshit. How many times have we been lied to? Uh, like, Iran shooting down a jet. Like that's friendly fire, I guess. Like Pat Tillman kind of shit. Ooh, that was dark. But like, I, let me let me find the actual article here because i'm so disconnected they wanted me to talk about impeachment i refuse to talk about impeachment that's not gonna happen um uh, let's see i ran ukraine I, I really didn't want to talk about this iran shit because i don't here, let's see here In the pre-dawn hours of wednesday in Iran's capital of Tehran, people were bracing for the possibility of American retaliation after their government launched more than a dozen missiles at U.S. military bases in Iraq. Well, they kind of like launched them at the dirt about 100 yards from the bases. But regardless, their worst fears appeared to come true when a fiery object plunged from the sky and crashed with an enormous explosion. Too bad it wasn't the sweet meteor of death. 
Some witnesses later told media outlets they thought Iran was under attack from the United States, which days earlier had killed the country's top general. Now, yes, that's kind of reasonable because we were the number one supplier of terrorism in the world. Instead, it was a passenger plane carrying Iranian citizens and dozens of others from around the world. And as the world would come to learn in the days that followed, Iran itself may have caused that crash that killed 176 people, including 82 of its own. Now, like, yeah, I, I figured that it wasn't a coincidence. I mean, it's not like it was an Asian pilot because they're such bad drivers. That, I would believe, was an accident. Uh, missiles launched uh, Wednesday, 2 a.m. in Iran. In the middle of the night, Iran launched 16 missiles at two U.S. military bases in Iraq in retaliation for U.S. drone strike in Baghdad that killed Iran's top general, Qasim Sol Salami. Salami, U.S. officials said, had been the mastermind of attacks that had killed dozens of Americans in the Middle East, and President Donald Trump had made the decision to take him out. I love how one guy can just decide somebody's going to die, and that's it. Fuck that guy, he's going to die. An enraged Iran answered. Kinda. Not really, though. Among the targets, the Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq, used by American forces after the 2003 U.S.-led invasion that toppled dictator Saddam Hussein, it houses about 1,500 U.S. and coalition forces. The herbal base, which the Pentagon said was the site of another attack, is located in Iran's semi-autonomous Kurdish region. Troops stationed at the base did have advance warning of incoming missiles, so they were able to scramble for cover. U.S. officials told USA Today, requesting an anonymity to speak frankly about the situation. They've been practicing drills for some time. That's because they knew it was coming. Why did they put their country so close to our military bases? We may never know. The early warning system worked, the official said. Okay, here's my thing. We're going to cover the whole Iran thing, okay? Politically, I'm about as anti-war as they come. I don't think we should be in Iran. None of that shit, okay? I completely, I, I, that, I want to let it, get it clear. That's where I'm at on that. But socially, my like life experience, I've come to learn and I can appreciate the fact sometimes when a guy's running his fucking mouth, he kind of needs a punch in the face. And we both kind of punched our, punched each other in the face because we were both running our fucking mouths. Let's just call it what it is and be done. Do I believe that Iran purposely shot this plane down? No, I don't. I really don't. And I'm honestly surprised they're not trying to use this um, as like an excuse to go to war. Um, Trump, to his credit, I honestly, uh, guys, I thought that like Trump was just gonna, it was gonna be just raining hell down on Iran after that missile. Like I thought that was it. There, Iran was gonna be a parking lot. You got a guy who the only predictable thing about Trump is that he's going to come back angrily and furiously. And he didn't even that makes him even more unpredictable. So like props to him for actually following through on his fucking campaign promises, I guess. Like, I, I guess, you know, it's like, don't thanks for not starting World War Three. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say. Let's let's see what else it says. There isn't really anything. Here's the plane goes down. Ukrainian Air, International Airlines flight 752 departed Tehran International Airport about an hour before sunrise bound for Kiev. It had 167 passengers and nine crew members aboard, the largest share of the Iranians. Yeah, I, I don't think they kill a bunch of their own people. Um, 63 Canadians returning after the winter break. The plane was fully fueled for the four-hour, 15-minute flight to Kiev where the Canadian passengers would connect with a flight to Toronto later in the day. And guys, universal health care didn't save them. The plane's captain, I'm not going to pronounce that, that name, had 11,600 hours of flying time on Boeing 737. Is that the one they were lying about, like not training anybody on aircraft, including 5,500 hours as captain? I hope it wasn't Denzel Washington in flight, because he had a lot of hours too, and that motherfucker was shit-faced. The first officer and an instructor pilot aboard the flight also had significant flying experience the boeing 73 blah 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 was one of more than 10,000 of the jets that the company had built since the late 1960s its fuel stage had been constructed in wichita kansas and its engines and other parts had been installed in everett washington see folks this is why i only buy shit made in sweatshops by little chinese kids making 250 an hour okay because that's quality that you know how many times my iphone has crashed over iran not once so eat a dick. The four-year-old 129-foot-long aircraft had been inspected in the days before it took off from Tehran. Minutes into the flight, the plane abruptly vanished from the radar nearly 8,000 feet 
of at nearly 8,000 feet of altitude, along with its captain, Amelia Earhart. That was another dark joke. Neither the plane nor its crew had sent a distress call. No survivors. About an hour after 752 disappeared, Iran's Islamic Republic news agency reported that a plane had crashed south of Tehran and women were still second-class citizens. Not that second part, but... A video later emerged showing the plane on fire, dropping rapidly toward the ground and crashing with an enormous explosion. Daylight dawned over a grim scene near an amusement park south of Tehran. The plane's wreckage was scattered, not like scat porn, over a quarter mile area. Photos of the scene showed charred pieces of the engines and fuel state. Er, fuselage? Is that what that word? I didn't know that was a word. <laughs> we're learning, so we're learning today, guys. A section with the oval shaped, or excuse me, with several oval shaped windows among them as the only visible evidence that there was an aircraft. Iraq's or Iran, excuse me, state media immediately pointed to engine failure as the cause of the crash. However, aviation age or experts who reviewed the available details expect, expected skepticism. Uh, oh, I didn't know they lied about it. Okay, so if they lied about it, maybe they did shoot it down. Or maybe it was kind of like, fuck, I fucked up, I got to cover my ass. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, obviously they shot it down. Maybe they shot it down on purpose. Um, I guess it remains to be seen. If I had to guess, no, I think it was an accident. I think it's totally just like 9-11 conspiracies. I think the 9-11 official story that three different government agencies, the NYPD, CIA, and FBI, were all completely incompetent and refused to work together and just run by absolute bumbling fools is totally believable because that pretty much describes most of the government. I don't know why so many people find that hard to believe. That's one of the few official stories I hear that I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, moving on to our third story, and this is a special one. Um, here we go. Let's find it. Uh, this is, I told Zach I wasn't going to tell him. It's not going to be anything that gets us yanked from the air. But here we go. Uh, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are moving out of the UK, away from the royal family to become financially independent. I fucking dig it. I dig it. You know why I dig it? Because the royal family is the biggest fucking welfare parasites on the face of the planet. I, you guys know I hate poor people on welfare. Well, I really fucking hate rich people on welfare. I don't discriminate based on how much money you make. I really hate rich people on welfare. And the royal family, at least the Kardashians have a fucking makeup line. They don't just sit there and molest children because that's essentially what they pay the royal family to do in England is just fuck kids. That's it. I mean, I guess if you want your tax, tax dollars going to fucking kids, then go right ahead. Is that royal wedding. You know who watched the royal wedding? Losers. Lose. You woke up at four o'clock in the morning to watch someone else's wedding. I don't want to go to my own wedding, okay? I wish I could just like have the, the documents notarized and just show up to the, the reception and the after party. Weddings are hell. I, I can't even imagine a British wedding. I had to watch. I, I, I saw like highlights of that bullshit were on TV. I was sitting in a waiting room at the doctor's office, and they were playing it. And I, I can just remember thinking to myself, God, I hope the queen has a fucking heart attack here. At least that would make it something exciting. At least something, you know, exhilarating could happen. You're like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. There's one less child molester in the world. Obviously, I wouldn't advocate for violence against anybody, but, you know, if, if it happens, I might buy everybody in the bar a shot. But, yeah, the, uh, you know, how, how much money did that, that wedding cost their taxpayers? Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Royal wedding cost. Here we go. And, of course, that's already the first thing that pops up on Google because my iPhone made by those uh, children in China on that 250 an hour is listening to me. Uh, royal wedding cost. Let's see here. Um, $34 million, 32 million of which went to security. You know what the security at my wedding will be? My uncle Bruce carrying his nine millimeter. That's the security that my wedding will have. $34 million on a wedding, on a fucking wedding. Do you imagine? Like, I know we, we spend money on stupid shit here. At least we don't spend money on fucking pedophiles getting married. I'm really impressed that Prince Will, I guess it's William, not Harry. Why did I call him? Harry? Is it Harry or William? Prince Harry. Okay. Harry, yeah, it was 34 million though. 
Uh, no, theirs cost 45.8. I was looking at Prince William and Kate Middleton. So Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, 45.8. I, I, I give him all the props in the world for breaking away from his child molesting family. Hopefully he's not Catholic. And that's how we're going to end this shit, folks. You have a good rest of your day. Uh, this, I'm Caleb Salvatore for Drunken Disorderly Media. Um, you can check out my podcast, Bread and Circuses by Big Bill Media. That's our company. Uh, I will have another one coming out called Deepish Thoughts, where I just kind of yell at the mic, kind of like I did right now. Um, shows, shows, shows. I am a stand-up comic, if you didn't know. January 18th to Saturday, 11 p.m., Big Canvas Theater in Dundee, 36th and Farnham here in Omaha. I will be there for the never too late to laugh. 11 p.m., it's like eight or nine bucks at the door. Um, I'll be hosting a show called Comedy and Chaos at Wired Pub on the 31st. I should have a couple more announcements coming up too, or coming up soon. But yeah, so 31st, that's Comedy and Chaos. That's me and Mr. Z, who's also a friend of this show. Uh, we'll be, or I'll be hosting that. He'll be on that lineup as well. Make sure you guys come check it out. That one's eight bucks as well. I got Mark Sibbett, who's a fucking hilarious comedian, is going to be on it here. He's like one of the, if not the, in my opinion, best comics in this city. So it's going to be lit. I got like nine people on there. Um, every one of them is funnier and is just funnier than hell. So make sure you come check it out. That's about it. Peace the fuck out, bitches. See you later.